Another week, boys, and another twab. This week at Bungie, Season of the Chosen has begun. Season of the Chosen kicked off with a bang of sorts. Kata, Empress of the Gamal, has entered the fray. Zavala stood his ground when being offered a seat on her war council. Ever since, we've been watching countless guardians doing their best in the new battlegrounds activity to keep the Cabal from uniting into an unstoppable threat to the system. New seasonal challenges have made their appearance. The helm has opened its doors and a fresh collection of loot has been introduced fueling your hunt for new tools of destruction we're just getting started week one of a new season is always fun but there's more to come now i know we already looked at this roadmap but let's just look again again battlegrounds launched this week alongside devil's lair and the saber strikes we even got a new stasis aspect which is really really good now trials will begin tomorrow with new weapons and of course armor and we got the new battleground coming next week and then another one after that alongside iron banner but in the short term two new battlegrounds are going to be coming in the next few resets moving on be hurt over the last year we've been increasing our efforts to support diversity and inclusion not only at bungie but throughout the destiny community and the gaming industry uplifting voices that deserve to be heard supporting initiatives like Black Lives Matter, and forming internal clubs and committees to further support employees at Bungie looking to make a difference. These conversations should never be one and done, and we're committed to the continued support of equal justice for all. That's right, Bungie launched this last year. Really cool stuff, man. They've got purchases at the Bungie store for these really cool pins, and all profits go to their Equal Justice Initiative Fund, which accumulated $425,000. Holy hell, that's a lot of pins. Moving on, we've got Patch Note Stragglers. That's right, some things that were left out of the patch notes. If I was a good YouTuber, you would already have a video in your hands of the patch notes, but I'm dragging booty. Truth be told though, it could sometimes be difficult coordinating with multiple teams to ensure every bug fix, minor tweak, or major feature is covered in a patch note document. This season, we identified a handful of notes that we wanted to highlight as we feel the pretty important changes to the destiny 2 experience first up we have an introduction to quest details from the dev team followed by a general list of patch notes so the quest details over the past year we've made a handful of iterative improvements to the player's quest experience early on these improvements focus on helping players understand their quests when viewed together most recently we've added the quest details screen this new screen allows you to dive into the details of each quest which should help you so points taking a narrative context and visual themes of the quest understand what the quest is asking you to do and what you've already done that's important get a better look at rewards for completing the quest taken together we're hoping you feel more knowledgeable and motivated about the quests in your law you can access the following screen by hovering your cursor over a given quest and using the inspect command all right that's pretty cool i didn't even know this was the thing budget continues we're excited to build on the quest detail screen in future updates with more improvements to the quest experience and now onto some general patch notes rituals remove hawthorne's red war era dialogue when completing her clan challenge players can now turn in gunsmith materials 100 at a time and vanguard tokens 20 at a time enough to get a full rank reputation valor glory and infamy rank up banners are now the bottom of the screen no longer blocking players from taking action in orbit when hitting a new rank thank god such a big change i know it may not seem like much but i hate it getting blinded by the rank up valor glory infamy values are now available on the main director screen for the ritual gambit reworked the moat system for more reliable gathering lies i've been playing gambit and the ground eats moats all the time. Crucible, Iron Banner. Remove skill-based matchmaking listing from Iron Banner's tooltip. It has been using connection-based matchmaking along with the rest of Crucible since June 2020. Well, looky there. Everybody complaining about skill-based matchmaking? It hasn't even been in the game. Survival, life count changed from six to four. Respawn time changed from seven seconds to five seconds, consistent with the rule set prior to Beyond Light. Thank God. New Light, a guardian rises, destroying the spider tank during the divide phase will now progress the directive by 50 percent fix an issue where veteran accounts that start a new character could not progress or dismiss some tutorials 
Schism. Fixing an issue where players could jump through a window during the Nevada vignette and block their mission progress. Cold Boot. Fix an issue for veteran characters playing the new light quest that would cause the legendary weapon tutorial to persist through the entire mission. All right, moving on. Risk, reward, risk runner. Fix an issue where players with full energy weapon inventory slots would have risk runners sent to the postmaster upon pickup. The weapon now drops as an exotic ingram during the mission, allowing players to clear the room in their inventories if they wish to pick up their risk runner immediately. For the Forsaken campaign, fix an issue where players could see a quest full message when trying to start the Forsaken campaign forcing them to find and pick up the quest at the quest archive in the tower before proceeding. All these missing patch notes have been added to update 3.1.0 article. A link of that will be in the description if you want to check that out. Moving on to the juicy stuff. The main reason why we're even reading today's TWAB, Destiny Content Vault plus the Cosmodrome. This season, two strikes from Destiny 1 are making their entrance to Destiny 2 through the Destiny Content Vault. We have a quick update on our plans for the Cosmodrome from the development team. So from the dev team, last summer, when we revealed our plans for the Destiny Content Vault, where we cycle out older, underused content to improve our ability to evolve Destiny 2, we also committed to periodically unvaulting legacy content, merging some of the best that Destiny 1 and Destiny 2 has to offer. That announcement included the reveal that the Cosmodrome would be returning and it would be fleshed out to roughly Destiny 1 year one parity. When we first shared our plans, we were still early in development and uncertain how far we would go with the Cosmodrome Unvault. We were pretty sure it wouldn't include the Plague Lands, but what about the locations added in year one's DLCs? Or the awesome colony ship behind Sepik Slayer with the Taken King? What about all the public patrol spaces? How much of the Cosmo would we need in order to accomplish our goals of having a great space to tell the new Guardian origin story, while still giving veteran players a big dose of nostalgia via some updates to the strike playlist. As we approached Beyond Light's launch, it became clear to us that we had a choice to make. After returning all three of its original strikes, do we invest more time and resources in bringing Cosmodrome to D1 parity, or do we switch our focus to building our new experience for year four and beyond? Given that we believed we had achieved our original goals and knowing the community and our team's desire for new content, we chose the latter option. But when we make that decision, decision, we failed to properly update your expectations for how far the Cosmodrome experience was going to be extended and that was a mistake. So to clear things up, with Devil's Lair and Fallen Saber, Strikes returning, we don't have any active plans to add more to the Cosmodrome than what is there, and we'll be focusing on new updates overall. We will continue to use the Destiny Content Vault to drive variety in the live game for the future. Cosmodrome was our first big push, and later this year, the Vault of Glass will return. We'll share more later this year. All right, I think that's pretty fair. Let's just be real. The Cosmodrome exists for free-to-play players. It exists for new players getting them up to speed with a splash of nostalgia for the rest of us. I was not expecting Plague Lens. I was expecting the entire Cosmodrome, but more or less I expected that in Beyond Light, not now. I definitely don't want to see the next big expansion being like, oh, here's the rest of Cosmodrome. Have fun. Obviously, new content needs to come first. We need new stuff, Europa level stuff. And Europa is truly a next gen location. And hands down, I would like to see new content going forward. Now, some known issues. Doom Marchers is not working, as in the linear actuated perk is actually not working. There's a couple of other bugs, but the other big one to me is actually Eyes of Tomorrow. We've Notice, or at least Scrub was the first one to point it out, I believe, that Isis tomorrow was doing 50% less damage. I know, some of us thought it was intentional at first. It definitely would be a classic Bungie move, right? Just some nerf out of left field. But no, Isis tomorrow is bugged. He's doing substantially less damage than what it's supposed to do. Matter of fact, it should be coming back doing even more damage than what it was doing previously. As a final note here from DMG, with everything going on, it's been hard keeping track of the days this week. Depending on your time zone and when you're reading this, Today is Thursday, which means tomorrow is Friday. I think the team is pretty excited for you to get your hands on some trials gear this weekend. New armor, new weapons, a returning favorite, and even some perks to keep an eye out for. Yes, that's right. Messenger! Even if you can't reach the lighthouse, you can start collecting some new gear from wins 3, 5, and 7. Don't forget, we also have a weekly bounty that grants the three win reward upon completion. See you out there. Don't go easy on me if we cross paths DMG. All right, guys, that's your twab. I've got a video going out here pretty soon, breaking down all the weapons for this season. I know we're running behind big time on the uploads. Don't worry. It's going to pay dividends for us in the next few weeks. 
I've been collecting loot. I have been grinding. I've been living and breathing Destiny's sweatiest balls in order to acquire all the loot we will possibly need. So thank you for being patient with me. Reviews will be coming out one after another starting this weekend. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.